Welcome to this episode of Micro Safari. This is exploring the pond in my classroom, which has actually been a jar filled with all sorts of things from different native ponds. We have lots of bacteria growing here, and that's the background, a lot of the gray muck you see there. But we're going to um, zoom in here in, in a few moments and get a close-up view of all the creatures you see moving around. And we have quite a number of individual species as well as just simple individuals. We start off with the big long snake-like things. We call that spirostomum. It's a ciliate that basically feeds on bacteria by sweeping them into its into its mouth. Uh, these two inchworm guys you see there are called rotifers. Um, I nicknamed them chainsaw heads as you'll see a little bit better later. Now we're zooming in we can actually see some of the actual bacteria there on the edges and there's a spirostomum working its way back and forth trying to feed on whatever bacteria it gets and you notice how flexible it is. It looks almost like a little snake. It's only a couple millimeters long but it's able to move through these tight quarters quite easily. The creature that's just off to its left there is called Euplodes, and there are a number of Euplodes around. We also have some background algae here called Spirogyra. The pinkish creatures you, you see but not with much detail are Blepharisma, more on them later. Here we have the rotifers again, and you'll see why I call them the chainsaw heads. They come in and they turn their corona of cilia inside out to feed on these bacteria. They are multicellular. Some of the single-celled creatures you see here are actually larger than the multicellular rotifers, but they, um, they anchor on and feed on the bacteria. Here's a paramecium, which is not moving a whole lot, so we get a nice view of its internal structure there. But it, again, feeds on the bacteria, so this is basically a great place for them to feed. Here we have Spirogyra, an algae, and you can see it gets its name because the chloroplast, the green part that photosynthesizes, has that spiral nature. Some of them have, have lost some of their chloroplasts there, but you'll see them throughout. There's more rotifer activity, a large spirostomum going by, and this green snowflake is called Micrasterius, one of my favorites. It's actually a type of algae called a desmid. So we look uh, around here, there we have more rotifers. A blepharisma, the pink uh, paramecium looking thing you see there. They are interesting in that they will sometimes cannibalize their own kind, um, but not in an environment like this where there's so much food, which is uh, thankfully very helpful. Uh, spirostomum still. So we scan out, there's another Micrasterius. They can really turn the waters green if you have enough of them. Uh, in there they tend to prefer slightly acidic uh, water. This green sphere you see is called Volvox. Might remind you of the car Volvo which comes from the Latin word to roll. Volvo, volvare. More Spirogyra there. Oop, there's a Euplodes on the left and then this green thing that just swam is a stentor shaped like a trumpet and it will swim around trying to feed on whatever bacteria and eventually will settle somewhere to feed. Now we've switched uh, areas of the slide here and you can see two spherical um, or oblong spheres there connected. They are basically um, in the process of binary division, probably a species called Colpidium. The green algae to the left is called Oscillatoria. Um, a big dark bit of bacteria, maybe decaying uh, grass leaf there. And we're going to slide up here a moment and see something uh, kind of special that we don't always get to see very often, and that is an actual worm. And this is a relative of the earthworm, which belongs to a group called the oligochaetes. And um, this particular worm is called Aocelia. And it's a uh, very common worm that we encounter in um, decomposing situations. So the fact that this pond water had been sitting for several weeks shouldn't surprise us that we have something that's really good at decomposing. This particular worm will wiggle through and you can see um, its amazing movement there. You can see its digestive tract as it, um, so we see more of the middle of it. And it basically feeds on organic material, and helps break that down, also 
uh, breaks down a lot of bacteria. These worms are very, very useful in uh, sewage treatment plants. This sample did not come from one. They're very common in nature, but they, um, you will find them literally by the billions in your local sewage treatment plant, and they help make our uh, water supply a whole lot cleaner. So, and they're just amazingly fun to watch as you, uh, as you see them here. They're both, you know, utterly disgusting and yet mesmerizing at the same time, which is why we've got, um, got our eye on them so well here. And they will, you know, just do this for hours and hours and hours. You also, um, as we're looking around, most of the other algae you can see here are still that oscillatoria. If we could zoom in, you might see um, some of the algae would be that spirogyra that we saw earlier. But this is just a, uh, a fascinating view, and this is a very routine kind of sample that you've seen here. Um, when we put stuff together and let it grow for a while, we get a wide range of things. So it's really lots of fun in the classroom to study these day-to-day, week-to-week, and they are really a blast. I hope you've enjoyed uh, exploring with me here, and you can always feel free to visit my website, bluelionphotos.com. See me at Twitter, at Blue Lion Photos, or you can see all of my videos at youtube.com slash jsmead. Thanks.